If you're thinking about becoming any type of online coach, this video is for you. You need to watch this video before you become an online coach. And the reason why I say you need to watch this video is because I've been an online coach for two years. And before that, back in 2011, I started a podcast where I was coaching people through the podcast. And but two years ago, started an actual coaching service. OK, and since then, I've changed the business model multiple times and I want to show you why I've changed that multiple uh, changed that business model and share some of the mistakes that I've made so that you can avoid making those mistakes as well. You definitely don't want to make those mistakes. So I'm just going to, you know, just go off the top. No particular order. One of the number one, one of the biggest mistakes I've made as an online coach is working with people that I shouldn't have worked with. And here's what I mean by that. So, you know, I carry myself like on the outside, like I'm a badass, like I'm a person that has very little empathy for people. But what I found is that I actually have more empathy for people and sympathy for people than I like to admit. And a lot of times that gets me in trouble. And the reason why that gets me in trouble a lot of times is because when I have empathy for people, especially in business, I end up doing things for them that I probably shouldn't do, like giving discounts or simply working with people that I know are not ready to work with me. But I want to change people's lives so much that I end up I would end up taking those individuals on. And so my, my one of my biggest tips to give you is that, you know, don't take people on as a client because you feel sorry for them. You got to understand that you are in business to be in business. Yes, you're in business to help people. You in, you're in business to help people improve the quality of their life experience, but you're also in business to make money and giving discounts and things of that nature because you feel sorry for somebody because you really want to help them, but you know they can't financially afford it. It's not doing them any justice because nine times out of 10, they're going to forget that you even gave them a discount. You know what I'm saying? So let's just say you really want to work with a person because you see something in them. Well, if you give them a discount, let's just say you charge them a thousand dollars instead per month or whatever it is, they're going to forget that the original price was $2,500. So they're not going to have any empathy in their heart or appreciation in their heart for the fact that you gave them a discount. They might have it up front, but they're going to forget because the price is going to be the price for them. They don't know about the other price anymore because you're charging them a thousand a month. And so what I mean by that is you looking out for someone is not going to make them appreciate you anymore. They're going to do what they're going to do. Another thing I would say is to make sure that, you know, make sure that you you vet people before you decide to work with them. Not everybody is going to be the ideal client for you. And the, one of the mistakes I made is I work with people that you know, I, I should have never worked with people that were, you know, depressed or just lazy. You know, they had more excuses than they had a desire to win. Those type of individuals were the worst type of individuals to work with. And, you know, you just think that you can change people. You think as a coach, you think that you can change people. But what I've learned is that you can't give people motivation. You can't give people hustle. You can't give people drive. And especially older people. A lot of older people are already stuck in their ways. They're already set in stone. They are the way they are. They are the way they're going to show up. And nine times out of 10, you can't change them. You know, they have to want to change themselves. And so I would work with people that would, you know, we would agree to, we would agree to a certain, you know, program. They would agree to it. They would say they were going to do it. And then every single week there would be more and more excuses. I didn't do it because I got busy. I was sick. I was tired. My significant other pissed me off. I had to take my kids to this place and that place. Time after time again, there would be more and more excuses. And you have to nip it in the bud immediately because although the reason why they're not succeeding is their own fault, they're going to blame you for it because you're continuing to charge them. And all they're going to see is, oh, your program is not working. But they don't take into accountability. They don't take into account that they're the reason why 
they're not getting ahead in life. They have too many excuses. So you have to nip that in the bud quick. And that was something that I did do. You know, I would tell people, hey, I'll agree to work with you for, you know, this amount of time. But if you don't perform, I'm going to cut it off. And I would cut it off. Like I would call or text or email people and say, hey, this relationship is over. And they would always be shocked. Like, why is it over? Because you suck. You're not good. You're lazy. You got too many excuses, you know. So you got to be strict with people, you know, be be understanding, but also be strict, because at the end of the day, if the program is not working, they're going to blame you for it, because all they're going to see is that they're getting a bill every month, but nothing is happening and they're not going to take into account. Only they can change their lives. So. You got to be mindful of that as well. Another thing you want to avoid, again, you want to avoid having so much empathy for people that you end up working with them at a discount or a lot of times working with them for free. Fuck that. You know, if they really value your services, they're going to pay for it. That's the end of that. that that's it. You know, everybody that I decided to work with for free, most of them are no longer a part of my program. They didn't value it because I wasn't charging them anything. But when I charged them any something, you know, they always complained about not having any money. So I switched up my business model drastically. And the way that I did that, I'll, I might cover that in another video. But when I switched up my business model from, you know, just working with people on a one on one basis to having more passive streams of income, that made me feel more happier about showing up and you know, providing that service over and over again, because now my income wasn't directly related to those individuals that I was working with. Now the, the company is making money without me having to talk to people directly at all. And the people that I do talk to directly are people that I actually want to work with. So also have your prices in order, have a, have a definite business model. Please get clear about the type of business model that you're going to have. All of those things really, really matter. Have a set time. Another thing, have a set time that you're going to work with people and a set time that you're going to stop communicating with the outside world. You got to have boundaries because one thing I would do is I would talk to people to 11 o'clock in the uh, 11, 11 p.m. every night, you know, from from nine in the morning to 11 p.m. You know, I felt like my mission was to serve people and I would end up going home, you know, at 1130 p.m. a lot of times. So I just want to I just want to say, you know, have your set hours of operation, even though it's an online business, you need to have your set opening hours and closing hours because if you don't it can get out of hand very quickly especially when you have clients on you know different sides of the world you know if you got a client in let's say New York and then another client in let's just say you got a client in Atlanta and then you got another client in California and then you might have another client overseas you know trying to work within their schedule will just throw you off drastically you got so, so I just want to say that another thing too, is that you can't give people enough free stuff in order to make them value you. You just can't. I know the traditional model, the Gary V model and all of that stuff and shouts out to Gary V. I think he's an awesome individual, but you cannot give people enough of your free time or your free information in order to make them value you. You just can't. People don't value what's free. People value what they pay for. And they show you they value it by paying for it. I'm telling you, you might hear people say, yo, you changed my life. You changed my life. You changed my life. And they might say that. But where does where would where do you get that value? Where is that value reciprocated? People pay for what they value for. Hands down. I'm a capitalist and, you know, I have a lot of free information out there. But when it comes to me showing up in real time. I learned to get paid for that. Like it's, it is what it is. So those are my tips for anyone that is starting this online coaching game in no particular order, no script. I just want to let you know what to expect and what to look out for. And uh, make sure you like, comment and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want more real talk about mastering your mind and making money online. It's Robbie Cornelius.